untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white Shrine deck featuring plenty of aura and equipment spells because we're playing with a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Dwarf Advisor saying whenever we cast an aura, equipment or vehicle spell we get to draw a card. No vehicles in this deck but plenty of auras and equipment. First off let's take a look at all the creatures in this deck. There's not a ton of them as you can see but it is important that those creatures be resilient to removal as we get access to Selfless Savior, a 1-mana one 1-1 one -one that can be sacrificed to give one of our creatures indestructible until end of turn. So turn 1 Savior sets up a turn 2 Sram nicely. Then at 2 mana we also have Adanto Vanguard and Seasoned Hallowblade that have built-in indestructible abilities, so those make for nice recipients of our various auras, as they won't be easily destroyed by opposing removal spells. We also have access to Core Spirit Dancer, another powerful card draw engine, also getting plus 2 plus 2 for each aura attached to it, and whenever we cast an aura spell we may draw a card. And then we've got Starfield Mystic giving us a 1 mana discount on enchantment spells, Transcendent Envoy giving us a 1 mana discount on aura spells, also a 1-2 Flyer, and finally Danitha, a 2-2 with First Strike, Vigilance and Lifelink, giving us a 1 mana discount on aura and equipment spells, so those make it much easier to cast multiple of those auras and equipment in the same turn. We also have Heliod Spilgrim that lets us search for any aura card when it enters a battlefield, so that gives us a ton of flexibility as well. And then Halvar, God of Battle, out of Kaldheim, can be played as an equipment, Sword of the Realm, for 2 mana, and then for 2 mana we can equip it, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 0 and Vigilance, and when the equipped creature dies we get to return it to its own owner's hand, or we can play the creature half, a 4-4, saying creatures we control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike, and at the beginning of each combat we may attach target equipment or aura card from target creature we control to another target creature we control, so we can potentially move around some of our enchantments and equipment. Then taking a look at the next category, which are the artifacts. So those will be mostly equipment, but we also have access to Mox Amber as a nice mana boost that we can combine with SRAM, giving us one additional white mana to work with. We've got Bone Splitter from the latest anthology, one mana equipment, giving the equipped creature plus two plus oh, and equips for just one mana. And then Shadow Spear, giving the equipped creature plus one plus one, a lifelink and trample, can also remove Hexproof and Indestructible from opposing permanents. Then at 2 mana we've got Ancestral Blade, which is both an equipment and a creature all in one card, so it gives us something to put all those enchantments and equipment onto, but will also trigger SRAM. We've got Black Blade Reforged, a very powerful equipment that only costs 3 mana to attach to a legendary creature, giving it plus 1 plus 1 for each land we control, otherwise equips for 7 mana to a regular creature, so we usually want to put this on SRAM. And then Mirror Shield, more built-in protection, giving the equipped creature plus O plus 2 and Hexproof, and can also deal with Death Touch creatures nicely. And then we've got our Maul of the Skyclaves, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 2 flying and first strike, and equips the creature right away as we play it. Then Sword of Body and Mind, another anthology card, giving the equipped creature plus 2 plus 2 protection from green and from blue, and whenever the equipped creature deals combat damage to a player we get to make a 2-2 wolf token and we get to melt that player for 10. Next up we'll take a look at all the auras in the deck. At 1 mana we've got Cartouche of Solidarity, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 and first strike, also makes a 1-1 one -one token when it enters a battlefield. Glaring Aegis gives the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 3 and also taps an opposing creature when it enters a battlefield. Sentinel's Eyes giving plus 1 plus 1 and Vigilance can also be escaped out of the graveyard. Solid Footing gives plus 1 plus 1, can be played at instant speed thanks to Flash, and as long as the enchanted creature has Vigilance, it also signs combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. We've got Valor of the Worthy from Kaldheim giving plus 1 plus 1, and when the enchanted creature leaves the battlefield, we get to make a 1-1 Flying Spirit token. At 2 mana all that glitters, also very powerful, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Angelic Gift gives the enchanted creature flying and we also get to draw a card when it enters. Conviction, a 2 mana enchantment, giving the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 3 and for a white mana we can return it to its owner's hand, so we can potentially save it when our creature is about to die to removal, or we can potentially just replay it over and over and pick it back up just to draw additional cards with our SRAM and Core Spirit Dancer, especially powerful if we get one of our mana discounts in play as well. We've got Heliod's Punishment, a 2 mana enchantment that we want to put on an opposing creature, removing all its abilities and it also cannot attack or block, and after 4 turns it will regain all its abilities once again. 
Then we've got Knight's Pledge, giving the enchanted creature plus two plus two. Pacifism, another cheap removal spell. Sentinel's Mark can also be played at instant speed, giving the enchanted creature plus one plus two and Vigilance, although if you play it in our main phase it also gains lifelink until end of turn. Spectral Steel also gives plus two plus two, and can also be exiled from our graveyard to return another target aura or equipment card from our graveyard to our hand. Then we've got more removal with Bounding Gold, can enchant any permanent, including opposing planeswalkers and artifacts for instance. We've got Dub, giving plus two plus two first strike and turns it into a knight in addition to its author types. Face of Divinity also gives plus two plus two, and as long as another aura is attached to the enchanted creature it also has first strike and lifelink. And Squire's Devotion gives plus one plus one and lifelink, and also generates a one one lifelinking vampire token. And then finally on Sarah's Wings, a four mana legendary enchantment aura, giving the enchanted creature a plus one plus one bonus, flying, vigilance and lifelink, and also turns it into a legendary creature which can have its advantages with a Blank Blade Reforged. And then the final category of cards we haven't covered yet are the instants, as additional cheap ways to protect our key creatures. We've got God's Willing, giving target which we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. We also get to scry one. Karmatra's Blessing gives target creature plus two plus two until end of turn. And if it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And then Sejiri Shelter can be played as a tap land or as a two mana instant, giving target creature we control protection from the color of our choice until end of turn. Turn. And then the rest of the mana base includes Castle Ardenvale as another late game mana sink making 1-1 one, one tokens. We've got 18 snow covered planes to go with our Faceless Haven which can turn into a 4-3 creature. And then a Tyrite Sanctum which for 2 mana can tap and give target legendary creature a plus 1 plus 1 counter and also turns it into a god in addition to its other types. And for 4 mana we can tap and sacrifice Tyrite Sanctum to put an indestructible counter on target god. So that's another way of protecting our SRAM. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Nicol Bolas, the Ravager deck. Well, having access to turn one savior is gonna come in handy since we can expect the opponent to have quite a bit of interaction. Turn one Thoughtseize, I guess takes away savior. So we'll have to wait until maybe turn three to play SRAM and play one of our auras or equipment in the same turn to get a bit of value. Uh, opponent actually takes Cartouche. Maybe they have a sweeper and they don't care about the savior. Turn to Arcane Signets. And yeah, we get to run out SRAM here. Envoy only discounts our devotion, doesn't discount our equipment. So I'm probably just gonna run both out next turn and discard Envoy to Nickel Bolas. Punishment, also a nice answer for Bolas in the meantime. Would have been an efficient turn to go Envoy plus Punishment, but now I can Shadow Spear plus Punishment instead. Since eventually Bolas could also transform into the Planeswalkers, so that also delays that. Goldspan Dragon, gonna hit us for four. And make a treasure that ramps for two. Alrighty. So we've got four mana this turn. Probably just want to double two drop. Uh, Angelic Gift could also be a nice one. So if we Angelic Gift now, next turn, I could uh, play Face of Divinity to try and race. Ooh, Core Spirit Dancer. Would have been a reason to prioritize playing the artifacts instead of the enchantments. All right, let's see if the Spirit Dancer can swing this race back into our favor. Disintegration will prompt Savior. Still 
still take the 3 damage. And the Mind Stones, their opponents got all the mana in the world. They're just waiting to transform their Nickel Bolas here. Which is currently suffering the punishment. On Sorrow's Wings, also a good one. Alright, let's see. We've got five mana. Yeah, we could go Spirit Dancer into Face of Divinity. Could keep Spirit Dancer as a leftover in case there's a sweeper effect that deals with all my small stuff. Definitely have a couple options. So I could see the case for just, you know, Face of Divinity on SRAM. Take it from there, but yeah, maybe it should still be Spirit Dancer, because if they do have just spot removal here, I would want a second creature we can enchant. Since the token's not going to be all that threatening. Alright, opponent's got a negate. Fair enough. Still get to draw two cards. And then next turn I can maybe start enchanting Spirit Dancer instead. Next turn they will transform Nicol Bolas at long last. Oof, and they've got another Nicol Bolas here. Although we should be able to kill that one. But not before Sram dies. So what does the Arisen do can draw cards, deal 10 damage to a creature or planeswalker. They can reanimate Nicol Bolas, so killing it doesn't necessarily accomplish much. Yeah, so this is gonna be pretty tough. Can I deal 12 to my opponent, I guess, is a question. Maybe. Start with a Valor of the Worthy on Spirit Dancer and take it from there. Doesn't look like I'm quite gonna get there. Can go for on Sarah's wings. To gain a bit of life back, take out Nicol Bolas, then lose Spirit Dancer on the way back. Can play Danitha and still play Devotion to have an extra creature in play. I think I like that better. And then this probably just goes face. And then I expect the opponent to transform Nicol Bolas, kill Spirit Dancer with a 10 damage. And then we'll have to try and kill the opponent from there. Bolas transforms. I guess they can also use the Arisen's abilities with Dragon God, so there was maybe still a reason to uh, try and kill him, but our opponent is at 6, so we'll see. All the cosmos are mine to control. Spirit Dancer down, still get a Spirit Token. And a Midnight Clock. That's fine. Alright, let's see if we can deal 6 damage here. Blank Blade I can play and equip, so that's a 4 mana investment, which would make this a lethal threat. And then I just need to cobble together 2 more damage on my other creatures, so let's say we do that, we have 3 mana left over. But we're not gonna get to draw any additional cards. So I think I'm one mana short. Or no, never mind. We can equip Shadow Spear and play Conviction. So that should do it. Equip Blank Blades onto Danitha. 
play Conviction on any non-Danithan creature. Although, let's see, if we give it Trample, 10, 11 power Trample, I guess that would also do it here, so... A few ways we could have done it, actually. And all face. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, up against an Omnath Locus of the Royal deck. So some sort of elemental ramp deck. And yeah, the sand looks okay. We could hang on to Sejiri Shelter. Feels like I'm gonna need the extra mana. And I don't expect the opponent's deck to have a ton of interaction. So we'll just play a tap land turn one. Metamize Prophecy. Let's the opponent's cry. Now we could potentially wait until turn three to play Sram and get immediate value, but I'm just gonna run him out there and cross our fingers that he survives. And then next turn we can go off with potentially three one mana spells to all draw cards. Sort of body mind also gonna be quite nice in this matchup. Opponent names Living Twister and casts a Cultivate to ramp. So next turn we can maybe expect a Living Twister to hit the battlefield. I think we wait on Sword until we can play and equip in the same turn. And then for now just start casting some 1 mana cantrips essentially. Adanto Vanguard could also be a nice play, but I think we're still sticking to the plan. So we've got a 4-4. And there's a Living Twister, which will draw two cards. And our opponent foretells something. Alright, so I'm gonna wait one more turn on Sword of Body and Mind. And then... This is two mana to equip, so I could go Spectral Steel Vanguard, Spectral Steel Equip. Those are kind of the more mana efficient options. Nothing I really need to get with Pilgrim just yet. So let's play the Spectral Steel, see what we draw. On Saros Wings. And then I think I just hit for six, play Vanguard just to diversify in case they have a bounce spell for SRAM. And then next turn we can get our sword in play. It's gonna be Phylath, World Sculptor, making a whole bunch of plant tokens. Luckily we have our flying and we've got our protection from green to get past the plants as well. So no lack of answers. Opponent got to see Castle with their prophecy. And yeah, I think Sword plus Equip Stram seems fine here. Even a Mox we can play, although nothing to do with the one mana. So that gets to hit the opponent, they cannot block it. And our opponent concedes, a sort of body mind to the rescue. We were gonna get to mill the opponent for 10, make a wolf token, and they might not have any answers for the enchanted and equipped Stram here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, up against a Taisa Karlov deck. If the opponent has a lot of Edict effects and Sacrifice effects, we could be in trouble. But I think this is a keep. Turn 2, I can play Sram into Mox Amber into Bone Splitter. Draw a card right away. Danitha and Mystic to give us a nice discount on future enchantments. Yeah, I think Bone Splitter over Shadow Spear for now. Although if the opponent does have Cauldron Familiar, the Trample and Lifelink will be quite useful. Opponent passes. So I can play Danitha. And still play Shadow Spear and Spectral Steel.
Right, I guess we'll go with the mirror shield instead. And then just hoping to draw more ways to draw cards, essentially. Bloodthirsty Aerialist, a 2-3 that can grow over time. So we'll kick things off with a Spectral Steel on SRAM. And then we can attach our equipment, potentially. Alright, so... Three mana left. Can equip this for three on SRAM, giving it plus four, plus four, or we can maybe go for shield on SRAM and then bone splitter on Donatha. At least if the opponent has a sweeper, we still have all these equipments in play, so we don't lose everything. Four mana. And it's going to be a Bastion of Remembrance. Makes a 1 1 token. Although with Shadow Spear, we can still potentially trample over. Alright, so don't have a whole lot going on in hand. We're just going to make a big SRAM, I think. And we can also move the Bone Splitter. Sure. Authorizer are just gonna chump and sack, and I don't get to gain any life and deal any damage. So 12-12, Trample, Lifelink, Hexproof. Opponent sacrifices a token to drain for one, grow the Aerialist. And we'll see what they can muster. And a concession. So yeah, we had a nice aggressive start thanks to that Mox Amber and the mana discount from Donitha helping us efficiently deploy our hand. We were kind of running out of steam, but luckily we had enough in play to win the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Yarok, the Desecrated ETB deck. This is a matchup where we would have wanted access to Hushbringer, but I think we still keep this. Hallowblades gives us a creature that doesn't easily die to removal. So I could go turn to Hallowblade, turn 3 SRAM into Bone Splitter if we can hit our land drops. Hmm. Given that I don't have a third land, I think I'm forced to play SRAM. Just so we can play some of these one mana cards to hopefully hit our third land. It's gonna be a Paradise Druid from the opponents. Alright, so... Kick things off with... Maybe a Shadow Spear over Bone Splitter. Yeah, I think we'll just play some one mana cantrips here. All right. And then next turn, we can maybe decide to deploy a second threat to diversify a little bit. Our opponents one turn away from deploying their commander. For now, cultivate for ramp. Punishment will be a nice answer for Yarok, as it will remove that doubling of Enter the Battlefield triggers. I would still like to hit my land drop, so maybe go with a solid footing. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm committed to just hitting my land drop here. 
All right, perfect. And then now I can play either Hallowblade or Sword of the Realms, although playing Halvar could also be quite nice here. So we'll get a second creature in play in case they have removal for SRAM. It's going to be binding the old gods, destroying our commander here. At least we'll get a 1-1 spirit out of the deal. And we can still escape Sentinel's eyes. And Fibble Thub the Lost going to draw a card. Mall of the Skyclave's not bad. So we've got a few options. I don't think I want to replay Sram here, although could go for it. Alternatively, on Saros Wings on Hallowblade's not a bad one. Or I can go Maul plus Sentinel's Eyes. And I can just about escape it here. Think on Saros Wings sets up our Halvar nicely, although I don't really care about lifelink, so the extra damage might be more important, so yeah, let's go for Maul plus Sentinel's Eyes. The advantage of Sentinel's Eyes is that it's a cheap aura. We can maybe play the same turn where we replay SRAM, so we can draw a card right away. But yeah, next turn we could kill them with Halvar. If the opponent just, you know, taps out for Yarok and doesn't have any other interaction, they could just be dead. And if their interaction is destroy based removal, we can give it indestructible. So they need something pretty specific. It's going to be a Lenor Visionary to draw a card. And a Risen Reef. But yeah, our opponent seems pretty dead here. Could also do it with dub and equip bone splitter for one mana. That way we don't have to sit through the Halvar trigger, which makes us move an equipment or enchantment even if we don't want to. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Giruda Doom of Depths deck, so some sort of graveyard reanimator deck. Well, um, our hand's okay. Could use maybe a bit of evasion, some flying could be nice to fly over a big ground blocker, but looks keepable to me. And then I haven't made up my mind yet if we want to play SRAM on two, or maybe wait to play Vanguard first, and then turn three SRAM plus Sentinel's Eyes to draw a card right away. Don't exactly know how much removal the opponent's packing. They're not playing Giroud as companion, so they can have cards with an odd converted mana cost in their deck. So I think we play Vanguard. Reason to play SRAM is that, you know, if I'm gonna miss my land drop next turn, I can maybe draw into one by playing our one mana Auras. But I suspect the opponent's packing quite a bit of interaction. So don't want to lose my SRAM right away. Alright, land is good. So. I think I play SRAM and then go with a Cartouche maybe on Adanto Vanguard. Hit for four. Hope to dodge something like a Languish or Extinction event. Shadow's Verdict would also be bad. It's gonna be a Psalm Simulacrum for now. That's fine. So now we picked up Angelic Gift so we can fly over with our Vanguard. Could also take a different approach and put the Heliot's Punishments on Simulacrum. 
and then Sentinel's Eyes on SRAM, so we can also protect it with Blessing. Yeah, that's reasonable too. Let's just attack for a little bit more damage. So now we've got two protection spells between God's Willing and Blessing, although they still don't save us from some of the aforementioned removal spells. Although I guess Blessing at least gets this up to 5 toughness, so it doesn't die to a Languish. But we're just gonna see Geruda here. And they hit a Mystic in our graveyard, but it's gonna be Serpent of Yawning Depths. So their Kraken here is unblockable. So we wouldn't mind finding a bit of life gain for now. Angelic Gift on Adanto. Right, Mox Cyber's nice. Pacifism could also come in handy. Can maybe put that on Chiruda, although they might have a flicker effect, so it might be better to put it on the Serpent. Or we can just Knight's Pledge and try and race. Uh, I guess we can try and race here. If they have a Time Walk effect, I might regret it, so maybe I should still pacify the Serpent's and I think I'm just gonna tap out, play a Spectral Steel, and then hit for six in the air. And next turn we can try and close out the game with Vanguard if they cannot get rid of it somehow. Pilgrim can find additional flying enchantments or ways to gain life. All right, Ritual of Suits, not too bad here. Can protect the Vanguard. And can protect in response once again. And that should be game. Opponent can hit me for six. But that's alright. So yeah, if they had any of the other black sweepers, we could have been in much more trouble, so we definitely dodged the bullet here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing an Admiral back at Brass, Pirate Tribal deck, presumably. And yeah, this hand seems okay. I don't expect too much interaction from a Pirate Tribal deck, since they need a high density of creatures for the deck to function if they ever want to trigger back at Brass. So I'm okay playing turn two SRAM and then reaping the rewards. If they kill SRAM, our game plan falls apart, so... Alright, it's just gonna be Warkind Marauder, that's okay. And then for now... Probably lead with Cartouche. Sentinel's Eyes Shadow Spear, perhaps. Just get to see the most amount of cards here. Now Beckett Brass can potentially steal one of our permanents. So we have to prevent that from happening. For now we'll take two. And as you'll notice here, the Turning SRAM into an O1 happens at a different layer than the Auras giving those bonuses, so those still apply on top of the O1 creature. Opponent played Icon of Ancestry. So, for now, probably lead with Solid Footing. Although it's not the most man efficient play if we also want to double two drop. Maybe lead with a Knight's Pledge. Alright, Mox Amber's nice, so now we can Solid Footing. And play another two drop. Could also start diversifying my enchantments instead of going all in on SRAM. But for now, 
pacifism looks good. And next turn we've got a couple draws that could win the game if we find Halvar, God of Battle, to give double strike. Maybe an ult that glitters. Ooh, Hostage Taker. Yep, that's a good one. It's gonna steal Sram. We were looking for a protection spell, but couldn't quite find it in time. At least they don't get to cast Sram. So that's the uh, drawback of not diversifying a little sooner. But our opponent's still at 13. I can replay Sram and make use of that Mox Amber mana. And probably just put Angelic Gift on the token to see a few more cards. Right, Donatha could be a nice one too. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking of Hostage Taker, but that makes a lot of sense. One of the few interactive creatures for the pirate deck. Ooh, Fiery Cannonade. Yeah, that one makes sense too. Deals two to everything. Yeah. So we'll have to rebuild once again. Probably without SRAM this time. Alright. We've got some more resilient creatures this time around. So I can go for Vanguard, Donitha. Donitha also enables Mox Amber. And play a 2 mana Face of Divinity on Adanto. And next turn we can turn that into First Strike and Lifelink. We can also use Sanctum with Donathan potentially. Got some options. Angrath. Yeah, that's another way to get rid of an indestructible creature. You're just since it gets sacrificed. So, opponent's got some nice answers. I was expecting more creatures and less interaction. At least we'll still have a Donatha, which can take out Angrath. All the Skyclaves, also a good one. So, let's see here. Equip Shadow Spear. And then probably go for Mold the Skyclaves. Could also escape Sentinel's Eyes, activate Tyrite Sanctum. So let's try this. Go after Angrath. And then if they block with the Hostage Taker, I can put a plus one counter on Donatha with the Sanctum. And kill both. And then I'll probably hang on to my Maul of the Skyclaves. And then we can maybe play Sram and Maul in the same turn. Two cards in hand. Captivating crew. Cannot quite steal my Donatha here. So probably gonna be the target of Helid's punishment. And a Forerunner can search for any pirates. So we'll see what that gets. Maybe something to tap down my Donatha for a turn. Yep, the Dreamcaller Siren makes sense. Alrighty, so... I want to play SRAM. Put Maul on Donatha. And put Punishment on the Captivating Crew. Opponent will get to tap down my creatures with the Siren. But we can draw another card with the sword, and then try and kill them the turn after. Back at Brass, yet to make an appearance here.
Icon of Ancestry finds a Daring Buccaneer. So we might see an upkeep, a Dreamcaller Siren before I get to draw and maybe find a protection spell. Nope, opponent's gonna wait until beginning of combat perhaps. Squire's Devotion means I'll have a token which we can maybe equip as well. Carmetra's Blessing, perfect. So now we get to punish the opponent for waiting on that Siren. Equip Danatha. And then response we can blessing. And it's gonna be Donatha across the finish line. So yeah, this Grixis pirate deck definitely put up a good fight and had a lot of interaction, all things considered. And yeah, overall Mono White's SRAM Brawl seems like a powerful historic brawl deck, capable of some very powerful starts and makes it very difficult for the opponent to interact with your strategy between all the indestructible protection and hexproof effects. And while SRAM doesn't close out a game as quickly as a core spirit dancer enchanted by a whole bunch of auras, which we didn't quite get to see in action today, it does guarantee that you have a two mana card draw engine in each opening hand essentially since we're playing Brawl, unlike the historic variant where you need to mulligan pretty aggressively to find your core spirit dancer and SRAM. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Hopefully we'll get access to Historic Brawl again in the near future. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.